Melissa and I'm Ranger Leah and we're here with Washington State Parks at Mount St. Helens and today we're excited to talk with you about earthquakes! Shake shake shake! Wiggle wiggle wiggle! Did you know the earth is constantly moving? It's happening right now! We just can't always feel it. The earth's crust, which is beneath our feet, is broken into dozens of rocky tectonic plates that are slowly moving and colliding like bumper cars. Beep beep! Vroom vroom! <laughs> We are directly on a tectonic plate, the North American plate. Another plate, the plate of the Fuca, is sinking and sliding eastward beneath our feet. As plates grind together, they get stuck, and then pressure is released. This movement creates earthquakes. But wait, what about earthquakes that happen at volcanoes, like Mount St. Helens? Are they caused by the movement of plate tectonics too? Great question, Leah. Volcanic earthquakes are different, but ultimately, shaking is shaking, so they have that in common. Here's some things to keep in mind between these two kinds of earthquakes, volcanic earthquakes and tectonic earthquakes. First, movement is responsible for both. Scientists believe that volcanic earthquakes are triggered from fluids in and beneath the volcano. As this liquid moves through faults and cracks under the volcano, there's a potential for earthquakes. And we all know that tectonic earthquakes are caused from the movement of plates, also along these fault lines. Second, earthquakes from volcanoes are usually pretty small or minor especially compared to those that plate tectonics are capable of. Volcanoes don't really make big earthquakes. But what about the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens? The May 18th earthquake was humongous. All right, that's true. For the most part, volcano earthquakes are usually pretty small compared to their tectonic cousins. A five plus magnitude earthquake is large, but rare. It would require the entire side of the volcano to fall off. Fortunately, that just doesn't happen all that often. Third, volcanoes do not create earthquakes over a large region, whereas tectonic earthquakes sometimes do. If we consider the source of an earthquake, this all might make more sense. Remember, earthquakes happen on faults. Haha, <laughs> it was their fault. No, it's silly. Stop cracking jokes. I mean, it happens on a fault. You know, the crack or fracture in a rock. At an erupting volcano, it's all very localized, happening in one small area under the mountain, sometimes half a mile or less. The smaller the fault, the smaller the earthquake. Comparatively, where two tectonic plates meet, this area could be huge. Miles, hundreds of miles, or even thousands of miles across. Wow! The larger the fault, the larger the earthquake. Remember, at Mount St. Helens, volcano earthquakes happen around eruption time, right inside the crater. When it's not erupting, tectonic earthquakes can happen at any time. And at volcanoes, you can get hundreds or thousands of little earthquakes on small cracks or faults, compared to a single large earthquake from a tectonic <laughs> shift. Mmm, I love cake. And fourth, tectonic earthquakes do not usually cause a volcano to erupt. Thank goodness. However, in some cases, an already active volcano is already under a state of unrest, and an earthquake simply pushes it over the edge. Yikes. Thank goodness this isn't very common. And all these earthquakes are recorded on seismometers, which can pick up movement from miles around. Jump, jump, jump. And here at Mount St. Helens, we have monitoring stations all over the place one in the crater, at the base, and even in the forest. Yum, yum, yum. Great transition, Leah. Let's talk about earthquakes here at Mount St. Helens. We get earthquakes regularly in the Mount St. Helens area, on and off the volcano. Though they are generally too small for us humans to feel, and most are from the movement of tectonic plates, not the volcano. Within the Cascade Range, Mount St. Helens is the most active seismically, followed by Mount Rainier and Mount Hood. 
When scientists take a signature readout from a seismograph, it can tell them a lot about what's happening on the surface and below it. Sometimes we get seismic events caused from rockfall, avalanche, ice movement, low-flying helicopters, vroom, 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 or even a stampeding herd of elk. Ba -dump, ba -dump, ba -dump, ba -dump. But sometimes these seismic readings are coming from beneath the surface at a shallow level directly from the volcano itself. Whew. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened in 1980. So true, Leah. In March of 1980, Mount St. Helens awoke after many decades of slumber. And the first telltale sign was earthquakes. We had so many earthquakes around the clock, we couldn't tell them apart from one another. Scientists called that a seismic swarm. <laughs> exactly, Leah. Just like a little swarm of bees beneath the surface. And during the 8.32 a.m. eruption at the base of the landslide was the site of the five plus magnitude earthquake, the largest so far. An earthquake continued after the eruption as well. And like most active volcanoes, Mount St. Helens has a habit of waking up going to sleep and waking up again. So around here, earthquakes are a frequent occurrence, geologically speaking. Ultimately, scientists are always monitoring the mountain. So if something were to change, they'd let us know. We even get weekly updates. True, an earthquake is an earthquake. Shaking is shaking. It doesn't matter what the source is. If there's an emergency situation, we'll react and respond in the same way. Though it should be noted, we don't expect earthquakes for Mount St. Helens to be large enough to cause damage. That's good news. Even the May 18, 1980 earthquake was only felt by a few people nearby. So, if a tectonic earthquake were to happen here, we'd be ready. Rocks would fall, trees would fall, birds would fall out of the sky, and you could even lose your balance. Whether you're on a trail, in a museum, or at a viewpoint, if you're able, find a safe place to drop, cover, and hold. Science is always advancing as we learn more and refine our understanding of the world around us. This ever-growing scientific community is making discoveries that benefit society, and it's happening right here at Mount St. Helens. Isn't that right, Alyssa? Hey, where did she go? Hey, Alyssa, it's time to say goodbye. All right, let's do that. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us here today. If you want to learn more about earthquakes and how to prepare for them, we encourage you to check out the following websites right here at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, no, right here. Are you looking? Okay, here they are. And a huge thank you to our friends at the United States Geological Survey. They were a huge help and we couldn't have done it without them. Well, see you next time. time. <laughs> yes, they do, folks. You heard it from her. She's an expert here at Mount St. Helens. Eruptions happen during eruption time. Right now, it's erupting, so we're gonna go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>